let's talk about the SBC again because a lot of people care about what's happening in the Southern Baptist Convention, especially with how they're going to react to the guidepost report. Like, yes, they voted on it and they had a great first step, even if it took a lot of work, maybe too much work to get that step going in the right direction. It was a good step. And so a lot of us have just kind of been like, OK, I, I guess that's that's it. That's where we're going with this thing. Uh, but uh, we have some issues when it comes to abuse and still about how to properly handle it within Baptist circles. And I say that because I'm a Baptist. I'm not a Southern Baptist, uh, but I am a Baptist, so it matters to me. So let's go over here and let's look. There was uh, an event, uh, an evangelism event that was going to happen. Uh, so this is Timothy Pig, who is a pastor in the SBC, and he was going to throw this conference. And as you can see here, it's the Great Commission Weekend. A fellowship church, uh, I can't even say where that's from, but Florida, uh, they were going to have a bunch of famous pastors come and speak and probably try to encourage the people to get more active in evangelism. And so there are some big names here. Mike Stone, who ran for SPC president, um, who was a huge person. See, he still is a huge figure in the conservative Baptist network. Uh, but then you have other names like David Allen, a very uh, famous, uh, I, I would say, scholar. Uh, Ronnie Floyd, uh, you know, he he was the president, right? Like there's there's a lot to that part. But, you know, Jerry Vines, I've got some of his books on preaching. Like these are some big names. And then right there, you probably see the problem. It is this guy right here. <clears throat> As you might remember. Johnny Hunt was named in that Guidepost uh, Solutions report. Uh, that was, whew, how to describe it? Illegal. I think that's the proper word. Illegal is the word that comes to mind for his actions. You can go and look up past videos of mine. I have some even with uh, Johnny Hunt on the thumbnail, like this clip out will probably have. Um, but Johnny Hunt... Uh, violated a, a woman, a, a fellow pastor's wife, uh, when they were supposed to be on some kind of vacation. And this pastor was really trusting this older mentor. Like the age gap between these two is crazy of what happened. Uh, he was he was like 50 some odd years old. And she was like, like 30. Like it, it, it a big age gap. Okay. There's a lot to that. But Basically, he forced himself on her. That's that's what they came up with. Uh, that was corroborated with others around who heard that story right off the bat. Uh, and Johnny Hunt at the time said, I did not do that. He pulled to Bill Clinton and said, I did not do that. This is a lie. I don't know this person. He started with that, even though they were well known to be friends, like the, like like this kind of mentor uh, mentee kind of relationship between these two pastors. And, uh, so like everyone knew that that wasn't true, but he was trying to go with that, that he just didn't know this person. And so eventually he said that it was consensual. It, it was not, it was not. And yet here we are not even a year out. We're talking about what? Six months after the guidepost solutions report came out. Maybe, maybe a little bit more than that now, but six months, this guy was lying and said that he didn't even know this person, then lying and saying that it was consensual. And now he gets to go and just continue on in ministry in the Southern Baptist Convention until some people got upset and the right kind of people got upset. Uh, Bart Barber, the president, uh, came out with a statement saying that if he had the power to defrock him, in other words, to take away his license to preach, which isn't a thing in Baptist world, uh, in Baptist theology, we don't we don't do that. But if he had that power, he would do it. Um, Johnny Hunt is not qualified, is not qualified in the slightest. He is not the husband of one wife. Uh, he is not above um, reproach. Uh, the guy is a creep. And honestly, should be facing a whole bunch of legal problems. 
uh, including jail time for what he did. And yet here he is being able to speak. Why? Because four pastors, one of which is now his pastor. He, he was, uh, at Woodstock down there in Florida, big church. I think it's in Florida. I might be wrong on that. Um, but big church, uh, and now he's attending his buddy's church and go figure one of his buddies and three other guys that are friends of his said, Oh, we've, we've gone through a restorative process and he gets to pastor again. That's not what restoration looks like in scripture. Restoration is about you confessing your sin and making it right with that person. Like we're not even talking to the church that, that he wronged, that he pastored, that he lied to for years. This was years ago. Uh, actually, shortly after he was SBC president, that's when that stuff happened. And so, like, this was years ago. He, he still didn't do anything. He didn't go to the church and apologize. He didn't go to uh, this woman and apologize to the husband and apologize. He never did any of that stuff. So, restoration according to a couple of Baptists doesn't look like anything like what scripture has scripture confessing your sin one to another, making things right. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We, we should be about that. And yet he doesn't do it. So I guess what I'm saying here is that, uh, I think that we have a real problem as Baptists. Like I am a Baptist. Like I, I, I say it this way to a lot of my friends. I'm more Baptist than you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Baptist. Uh, but I think that, man, we really need to rethink our accountability. Now, if we do it right, if we have a plurality of elders, if we're accountable to our local churches, if, if we're real and transparent uh, with those churches, with fellow members, with fellow elders, there should be accountability that's just built into our relationships. But when something like this could happen, and if it wasn't for Twitter just like losing their mind, it would have happened. Is There's just something really wrong about that. And so, like, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's beyond the power of a denomination. And, you know, SBC friends, you know it when I say it. Like, you're a denomination. Like, come on. All this convention stuff. It's, we know what you are. You're a denomination. It's okay. Uh, but like, there should be at least some power to be able to do something about these kinds of things. I don't know what that looks like, but I think us Baptists, we need to start having some conversations about what that looks like without losing the autonomy of the local church. Like that at least a ball can get rolling to where we're not having to have these huge blown out fights on Twitter in order for just one guy who should be facing prison time or at least legal action of some kind, like that they should be able to go and preach. Like, no, we should be able to have something to where we can deal with these things without having to go to the courts of Twitter and let them rule. Now I am thankful that they did. I do want to point out just one thing, uh, with, uh, Timothy pigs letter here. I thought it was interesting. Uh, so he says this year, the goal was the same assam uh, uh, assemble a team of gifted expositors to feed my soul and members of fellowship church for our great commission weekend in a stroke of naivete. I did not in wisdom allow enough time to pass before inviting Dr. Johnny hunt. Therefore, in light of this oversight of wisdom, I have asked Dr. Johnny Hunt to step aside from being with us at our 2023 Great Commission weekend. So that's his that's his uh, reasoning for not having him. Not enough time has passed. You guys, you guys still remember what he did. <laughs> and I got to wait, I guess, until you guys forget. So that's why it's important for us to talk about these things, because we shouldn't forget. Let's hold on to these things and remember, if other people aren't going to hold them accountable, at least Twitter and social media, even YouTube can do that, I guess. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you there. Um, <laughs> didn't think you were going to watch the whole video, but you did. So that's good. Um, probably means that you like the video. So hit the like button before you click over here. Maybe YouTube 
is going to have a video over here for you to watch. Right here. Just for you.